squad this is Cecily and Freya today say hi Freya say hi all right she does not want to be here so today we are going to be talking about ATT animal assisted therapy for chronic illness so animal assisted therapy for chronic illness is really becoming widely accepted as a scientifically proven way to help people through chronic illness it's basically the idea that having a pet a dog a cat anything can help with the emotional burden that comes with chronic illness. In the past, therapy pets have been thought of as like golden retrievers that would help a blind person cross the street or something like that. And that's still extremely necessary. But the scientific community is starting to accept that animals also have significant benefits to humans, just emotionally and psychologically. I can be a testament to this because I was really nervous about getting cats when I first started looking at them last year. I've owned animals all my life, like as a kid, Kid. my parents had animals and I helped take care of them and it was always a really enriching part of my childhood basically my house never didn't have any kind of pet we've had turtles we've had cats we've had dogs but I've never taken care of an animal all by myself and when I moved out to college I moved alone so I was a little bit nervous about taking care of an animal and I was wondering if it would be ethically responsible of me to even take on the burden of having an animal because I was afraid that maybe my chronic illness would get in the way I have to go to the hospital a lot more often than normal people do. And it, it could definitely come to a point where that could hurt my animal. But I thought about it a lot. And something that my mom said to me last year when I was considering getting an animal really stuck with me. I had just come out of two of my most invasive surgeries and they ended in May. And I was thinking, you know, of getting these cats in July. And my mom was like, Cecily, I want you to get an animal because I think it will make you feel tethered to something on this earth <laughs> that's not just yourself. That outward perspective really helped me because if you're like me and you have chronic illness, you've probably experienced a time in your life where you felt disconnected from everything around you, where you felt almost depressed and sad and maybe even angry and alone. It's really easy to fall into that. But having an animal gives you the ability to feel like there's something besides you that you're responsible for taking care of completely. Something that relies on you completely. Now, I'm 23, I'm gonna be 24 this month. I'm young and I don't have a lot of close friends. And a lot of the reason for that is that friendships take a lot of energy to maintain. Human friendships, human relationships take a lot of energy to maintain. And I pick the ones that I want and I, I hold on to them and I put a lot of effort into them, but I don't have as much expendable energy as I used to to keep up with my friends. And I regret that in some ways. But an animal is such an uncomplicated form of affection and love. You don't have to always be 110 10% for them. You can be at 20% of your energy level and still feel unconditional love from your pet. And they don't ask for much in return. My cats need clean litter, food, and some entertainment and water. Other than that, they really don't demand a lot from me. And when I'm feeling sick, or tired, they just curl up next to me and they make me feel like I'm not alone. If you are like me, have chronic illness, or even a chronic mental illness, like chronic depression or something along those lines, chronic pain and chronic depression or chronic mental illness are very similar and they're very alienating. They both make you feel like you're other or like you're not a part of reality like you used to be. And maybe getting a pet will help you feel grounded like it's helped me feel grounded. It's been an undeniably helpful resource to me to have my cats to come home to, to feel responsible for, to feel like I have to stay on this planet to take care of. And it helps me in my fight against my illness because it helps me think I need to get healthier so that I can take care of these animals the way that they need to be. Pets also give you a sense of routine. So sometimes when you're chronically ill and you have to take a lot of time off of work or school, you kind of lose your routine. It's easy to fall into a sort of depressive pattern where you're not needing to do anything that day, so you don't do anything or you come straight home from work or school and you're just done with the day. But an animal kind of forces you to come out of that, to come out of that repetitive cycle of maybe not having a routine and you have to feed them. You have to walk them if they're a dog or an animal that needs walking. You need to play with them if they need excitement or companionship. It kind of breaks you out of a selfish routine. <laughs> it did that for me. I would often come home so exhausted and feeling like I, nothing else mattered besides me and feeling better, but an animal or having two animals for me in my case 
has made me feel like I'm not just responsible for me. And it's really important that I maintain a routine that keeps my animals safe and healthy. So that's another thing to keep in mind. The other key word I want to bring up is companionship. I think that it needs to be highlighted in this conversation because companionship is not easy to come by, especially in a companionship that's as unconditional as an animal's love for you. If you treat your animal right and you're kind to them and you save them from a shelter or a rescue or wherever you get them, they will be indebted to you in a way that other people aren't or can't be. And an animal is just someone who will give you that peace of mind that you matter and that you're needed and that you're worthy of love. Because chronically ill patients, I think, if they're anything like me and the other people I've met on my stoma journey, my ostomy journey, my bowel health journey, they might feel a little bit of detachment from the self and maybe some feelings of worthlessness or sadness. That's really profound. But animals have helped me cope with that a lot. They've helped me feel like I'm not alone and like I'm not worthless. Like they love me and they need me and I am needed. Life with a chronic illness is really difficult for anyone. I don't care who you are. <laughs> it is difficult for the strongest of people and it can hit anyone at any time in their life. But an animal can give you a sense of well-being that maybe you were missing before. And for that reason, I think they are extremely helpful. If you've ever considered having an animal or getting an animal and adopting it and you're worried that maybe your chronic illness could keep you from being the best pet parent that you could be, consider that maybe it could just be the best thing you ever do for yourself and for the animal. You could be saving their life and also saving your own in a weird way. <laughs> I feel like my cats have kind of saved me in some, some ways and uh, I couldn't be more thankful for that. Um, I think we all need to take stock of the things in our lives that help us feel better every day. And for me, animals are definitely one of them. One of the reasons that this video idea came into my mind, especially right now, is because um, I was reading several articles on CNN that made me kind of sad about how animals are being abandoned because of the coronavirus outbreak, especially in um, America and other countries like China. And it breaks my heart because I know why people are doing it. They're doing it out of fear and desperation. You know, sometimes it's that they can't continue to take care of an animal because they're sick or their financial situation changed. And in other cases, it's because people are afraid that animals can aid in the transmission of the disease. Now, it is really important to note that a lot of these fears are misplaced and not entirely scientifically founded. And a lot of people are just reacting and they're scared and they're, they're fearful and it's panic. I understand those feelings, but I wanted to make this video because if you are chronically ill or perfectly healthy, right now is the best time I could think of to adopt. Animals need us. They need people with open hearts and open arms more than ever right now. And I would just love it if some of the people in my community of followers and watchers would see this video and think, I am in a place where I could use some companionship. I could use some help feeling grounded. I could use some help feeling connected to reality. Let me go get a pet because that would make me so happy. And I'm sure it would make whatever pet you look at or you adopt feel so loved. Just like maybe you need to feel right now. Right now is a perfect time to adopt because animals need us more than ever and they need us to be strong for them and they need us to not fear. And if you have an animal and you're worried about the coronavirus or transmission of it through the animal or taking care of it if your financial situation has changed, I urge you to just take stock of all the things that that animal has given you and maybe try to think twice because the animal needs you. And I think a lot of us need animals more than perhaps we're willing to admit. It's a very mutually beneficial relationship. Well, that is it for my video today, Gut Squad. But thank you so, so much for watching. Valkyrie also thanks you for watching. She's being adorable. I just woke her up though from sleeping, so I feel kind of badly. But yeah, 
Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys! Hi, Valkyrie.